Hey everyone, how are we doing? So this is a video I've been really excited to start making, and that's just because this is the very first video in the brand new studio. Now, as you can see, this place has a lot more work that needs to be done to it, but at least we're at a point where I'm able to keep my equipment in here and it's able to be safe and dry. And I've just been enjoying the process of organizing this space and moving in and trying to find new and efficient ways of being able to uh, use this space in its most effective way. And in this video, I really wanted to focus in on one of the tools that has been really helping me as I've been trying to do that. This here is what I'm calling the ultimate filmmaker's toolbox. I've gone through many different toolboxes and many different ways of being able to organize and keep track of my uh, tools or the little things that I use while I'm on set. And none of them have really worked well for me and suited my needs quite as well as this box right here. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what's inside and see what makes this toolbox so special. Now this is no ordinary toolbox. This is a toolbox that is originally designed for fishermen. So that you're able to keep track of all your bait and all of the different fishing lines and and all the little uh, bits and baubles that you might have as a fisherman. It's all categorized and there's many different layers to it as well. This is such a good design for people like me, people who have all these individual nuts and bolts and, and little individual screws that, that can be really a bit of a hassle to keep organized. And then you have this larger compartment down here that just kind of acts as a junk drawer where I keep all kinds of other tools, zip ties, wire cutters, clamp levels, flashlight, pliers, spongy cable, gaff tape. But if we take a look at the compartments of these individual shelves, all these individual layers, we see that it's organized in a way that is really efficient for what I do. All of these tools right here are the things that I use on a regular basis. And I've organized these bolts and screws and these pieces of kit that I use most often on the top shelf because that is what I'm going to be grabbing the most often. So rather than having to open it up, pull out the shelf and then have to dig around a little bit, all I have to do is open up the box and then they're right here. Now, what is it that I grab the most often while I'm on set? As a filmmaker, your life is completely run and completely surrounded by these three pieces of metal. We have a quarter 20 inch screw, we have a 3 8 inch screw, and we have a baby pin. These are the foundations of pretty much any camera equipment. If you have ever screwed a camera onto a tripod, you've encountered a quarter 20 screw. This is pretty much the standard screwing mounting method that you can find in filmmaking. This camera is being held up by a quarter 20. That light's being held up by a quarter 20. This microphone's being held up by a quarter 20. I think my pants are being held up by a quarter 20. What isn't being held up by a quarter 20 right now? I'm not exactly sure. If it's used for filmmaking and there's a screw involved, it's probably a quarter 20 screw. Quarter 20s are awesome. They're really common and they pretty much run my life. 3 8 is also really common and is used in a lot of cinema gear, but I don't use 3 8 inch that often just because most of my accessories run off of quarter 20s, but you do come across it every now and then. And so I do have a couple of those in my kit as well. Now let's take a look at these baby pins. These are how you're usually holding up different types of lights. You'll find baby pins on the end of every single light stand on most C stands. There's all kinds of filmmaking gear and there's all kinds of grip gear that depend on these pins. And on most lights, you're gonna find one of these. These are baby receivers. So all you need to do is you need to bring the baby pin in contact with the baby receiver. And once these two pieces are together, you can just tighten the screw down and now it's locked in place. That's a lot more efficient and a lot easier to set up than most of these other systems in place where you have to kind of twist the entire accessory or you have to twist the entire item around in a circle. That's a lot more difficult and a lot more demanding. But what can be really impressive and really practical and helpful for you while you're on set is learning how to take all these individual mounts and all these individual screws and brackets and systems and trying to figure out how to be able to get them to work together. This presents you with the most amount of flexibility and most amount of options. So you're able to pick and choose specifically the pros and cons of each one of these systems for your needs and for the individual project or item that you might have. So here's just an example of the kind of uh, rigging and the kind of flexibility that having a kit like this, a box like this, can present you with. So if you take a look at this microphone, I have all kinds of adapters and all kinds of uh, systems at play here. This microphone is clamped to the ceiling through this post right here, and at the end of this post I have screwed in through the quarter 20 screw uh, one of these ball heads. And the reason that I have that is because if ever I want to do adjustments to the microphone or the placement of it, it's really simple. I just twist this off and then it swivels. Sorry, I know that probably sounds a little funny, just all the little taps and, and dings there. But now I can just swivel this microphone anywhere I want, lock it in place, 
and then continue shooting. And that's just really helpful. So I'm able to really point the microphone right towards the subject. Uh, so I'm able to get the best sound quality. Now, following the ball head, I had a couple different options of how I could actually get the microphone attached to that ball head. I'm often using this microphone with Panasonic G85 for vlogging. So if ever I'm wanting to attach this to the hot shoe mount of my camera, I can just go ahead and twist this off and pull it off and then use it as a microphone and mount it to my camera. And it's that simple. I don't have to deal with any twisting or pulling or locks or, or anything that's really that rigorous or that uh, time consuming. I can just kind of slap this thing off by just pulling it off of the hot shoe. So you can see why this sort of weird contraption setup can be really helpful and efficient for me. When you have a kit like this, you can find new and creative solutions to solve all kinds of different problems. There was one project I was doing for this church uh, where I needed to fill up the scene with a lot of light. And it was a really big wide shot. I had one more light that I really wanted to hold up, this guy right here. And this is a really nice light. It's large, it's bright, but it is heavy. I can't just throw this up on a small little dinky ass little tripod. It needs to be held up with a, a C stand or a combo stand, something that is able to take the weight of that thing. And I was out of stands. I had no more stands left. I was using them all for different lights that I own. So I was looking around trying to figure out how I could rig this light up and then I saw it. This church had this really heavy duty ladder that they used for things like fixing the projector or um, you know maybe the uh, switching light bulbs, things like that. So what I did was I took one of these extension arms, I grabbed one of the gobo heads, I placed the gobo head in here, I clamped this to the ladder so it was really solid and really firm in place. Then I took one of these pins and I dropped it inside of the gobo head. So now I've turned a ladder into a really heavy duty light stand. And it was only because I had this kit with me at the time, it was only because of my ability to problem solve that I was able to rig this up in the way that I was able to. By far the most ridiculous way that I've rigged up lights is by using what I call the light light stand. Uh, it's a weird name, I know. It's a really strange way of being able to hold up your gear, but there's an expression that I like to use and that's um, if it's stupid, but it works, it's not that stupid. So I placed it like this where I had it flat on its face on the surface of the light, which I don't really recommend doing. What I did is I took two of these pins and I placed both of them inside of the gobo head. Then I was able to drop my light onto that pin that was resting on the gobo head. And now I have a perfectly great way of being able to adjust and swivel a light around and clamp it into place and leave it right there. And hey, you know what? It's stupid, but it works. So is it really that stupid? So why would you wanna go about doing this? Why would you wanna go about using these weird bolts and, and collecting these little screws? Well, it's simple. It saves my ass all the damn time. There's gonna be times where you have problems and you need to come up with solutions to those problems. And so you need to figure out ways that you're going to be able to shove a circle in a square and and make something work that it's not supposed to. That's kind of strange. And you look at that and go, huh, so stupid, but it works. Is it really that stupid? It also saves you a lot of money. These bolts and these screws and these options and holding on to all this stuff, you no longer have to spend money on things like dedicated clamps or dedicated stands. You're now able to sort of problem solve and jimmy rig your way out of any sort of problem or find solutions to specific issues that you might have while you're on set. And that can save you a ton of time and a ton of money. And lastly, it's just fun. It is so rewarding when you actually figure out, whoa, I did it. I figured out a way of being able to hold that up. That should not work, but it does. And it's just satisfying. So I highly recommend that you take a look at buying yourself one of these uh, cases or find new ways of being able to hold up your gear. And let me know in the comments down below if you have some kind of uh, a toolkit or some sort of unique way that you rig up or organize your gear to be able to help you do this in an effective and efficient way. I'm always interested in hearing your thoughts and learning. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Happy New Year. If I actually get this video done on time, hmm, probably not. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that notification bell so you're getting those notifications, you know, do all that jazz. And I will see you next time. Take care.